Alright. Is there any foolish trespasses tonight? Nah. Right. That noise is a bit weird, isn't it? Crasis <laughs> was hanging about in his new sanctum, staring into a gleaming emerald crystal that allowed him to view whatever land, whatever individual he desired. Unfortunately, wherever he looked, he saw devastation. Azeroth had been ravaged by several wars. First the green-skinned behemoths called orcs had invaded the world. They would have got away with it too, if it wasn't for the formation of the human-led coalition known as the Alliance. After the orcs were defeated, there was a period of relative peacetime, but, as is always the case during peacetime, a whole bunch of infighting then started, with members of the coalition vying for power over one another. People doing a hell of a lot of yelling at others, whilst doing almost zero introspection whatsoever. Although, Krasis had to admit, part of that had been the fault of the dragons, or mainly one dragon, Deathwing, sneaking about, pretending to be some bloke, and manipulating everyone. But that opportunity wouldn't have existed for him, if it weren't for the greed and desire of humans, elves and dwarves. And then, the Burning Legion came, attacking alongside their monstrous pawns, the Undead Scourge. It took everyone, including the Orcs, coming together to prevent total annihilation. Krasis then waved his hand over the crystal, summoning a vision of the Orcs. They were in Kalimdor now, a distant continent across the sea. Already they'd built several stone structures, not the most extravagant buildings, but Orcs had spent so long being nomads and prisoners, luxury to them was having a place to live. Krasis then noted some Orcs tilling a field. Orc farmers, he thought. How wonderful. The region wasn't exactly lush, looked pretty barren to be honest, but still, he wished them all the best. Next, Krasis summoned a vision of a place much closer to home, Dalaran, or what was left of it anyway. The demons of the Burning Legion had completely devastated the capital of the wizards. Several of those Krasis had counted as friends had been slain. Leadership of the Kirintor was now in disarray, which was something Krasis knew he himself would probably have to step up and lend a hand with at some point. So all in all, pretty shit state of affairs really. Krasis then dismissed the scene-setting exposition crystal so that the story could start, and shifted into his true Coriolstra's dragon form, so people who haven't watched the Day of the Dragon series are all caught up. And then... Coriolstra's! And bloody hell was that all about, Krasis thought. He looked around the huge chamber, but nothing. He was alone. Coriolstra! I hear you! What do you want? The disembodied voice did not respond, but Krasis could sense the sheer desperation in it. So he concentrated really hard, and tried to establish a link with this stranger, who so badly needed his help. Sense me. Give me some indication of what's wrong. The dragon mage then felt the barest touch. The stranger had accepted the link on their end. And then, an absolutely overpowering presence knocked Krasis on his ass. This being's magic dwarfed his own a thousandfold. It felt as if time itself surrounded him, in all its terrible majesty. Oh, great. I hear you, Nazdormu. Tell me what's wrong. Rather than respond with words, the aspect of time sent a whole bunch of astonishing images which filled Krasis's mind, the force of which proved too much, and so he passed out. We did it, folks. We've won Richard Nat Bingo. Several minutes later, Krasis picked himself up from the floor, feeling a little bit groggy, and as his mind cleared, he realised what had just happened. Nosdormu, the Lord of Time, had been desperately crying out for aid. And for some reason, he'd picked Krasis, a lesser dragon. Why? Why not Alexstrasza? Or Asira? Krasis then tried again to reach out to the great dragon, but that just caused his head to start spinning again. A mystery was afoot, one which required investigation. But Krasis was going to need some help. Someone who could adapt readily. And immediately, one individual sprang to mind. A human. A wizard. Ronin. Meanwhile, in Kalimdor, a bold elderly orc sat by a smoking fire. A shaman named Kalthar. 
just as his father had taught him, who had in turn been taught by his father, and so on and so forth, Kalthar went ahead and sprinkled some bone dust over the fire, added a few berries, and inhaled the fumes. Voices then murmured in the old shaman's head, spirits of the world, whispering anxiously, warning of something. But what? He had to know more. Kalthar then added the final ingredient, a bunch of black leaves from a plant that only existed in the orc's homeworld, and instantly, the smoke turned blue. This was some potent shit. But Kalthar went ahead and leaned forward, allowed the fumes to fill his lungs, and immediately started to trip balls. The world transformed. He was now a bird, soaring high over the landscape. And although initially he felt a sense of exhilaration, he felt young again, that feeling was quickly replaced by the sense that something was wrong. Something was there that should not be. And as the old bald shaman bird passed over a mountain range, he saw it. The thing that was causing him such anxiety. Some kind of water funnel. Was somehow swallowing and disgorging simultaneously. And the thing that it was drawing in and spitting out was time. Days, weeks, months, disappearing and then re-emerging. Kalthar was so shocked by what he saw that he failed to notice the maelstrom was actually now pulling him towards it. But once he realised, he started to flap. He flapped his old bald wings with all of his might. But still, the funnel continued to pull. In desperation, Kalthar called out to the spirits, praying they give him the strength he needed. And sure enough, they did. <gasps> the orc opened his eyes and realised he was back by the fire again. No longer an old bald bird, being sucked down the world's plug hole. I must tell Thrall. Quickly. Else we lose our home. Our world. Again. 